give me the the thumbs up if you can see my screen. Great. OK, thank you very much. Let me put this in slide mode. OK, there we go. So um, the house rules are still the same. Yeah, um, I expect you guys to. Um, ask questions to stop me whenever um, so that it is interactive. And I'm just going to remove the slide mode because then I can't I can't see the chats and I want to be able to see the chat function. Um, yeah, so I encourage you guys to ask questions like the last time. I don't know if there are any new new people. Maybe I should just introduce myself. My name is um, Kali Rendwe Raneyeni, and I'm one of your four e tutors. Um, we are available to assist you on different uh, learning units across the module. Um, we are mostly available on the discussion forums, so I do encourage you to to go into those discussion forums and ask um, questions in the relevant forums. But for tonight, we're going to focus um, our discussion on learning unit seven. Um, and specifically, we're going to look at the monetary policy in the ISLM model for an open economy. Um, so we're going to look at both the expansionary monetary policy and the contractionary monetary policy. So like I said, um, these are the outcomes of learning unit seven. But what we mostly interested in today is the impact of monetary policy in an open economy. So here we're talking both expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy. So just a few things to, re to remember. Um, you need to be quite comfortable at this point with the IS um, curve. We discussed this for closed for the closed economy, and it's really the same, just with an addition of um, interest rates and exchange rates. So I expect at this point that we are quite comfortable with the relationship um, between consumption, for example, investment expenditure, government expenditure, and net exports, and what that does to um, domestic demand. Also, one of the other uh, e equations that you need to be comfortable with at this point is the LM relation. Um, and that's really the relationship between um, interest rates and the money that is applied in the economy. And also, perhaps new from the last time we interacted, is this issue around the interest parity relation where um, we're expected to at least be comfortable with the relationship between domestic interest rates and um, foreign interest rates, including um, exchange rates and expected exchange rates. So those are topics that I will not cover, but if you have any questions as we go along, um, I will answer them. But if you have specific questions on how they work, those are topics that we can address on the discussion forums. So this relationships on, so this is really in, in your study guide on page 22, and it summarizes nicely. It gives the chain of events on what the impact, say, of interest rate is on investments, on demand, and ultimately on output. Um, and similarly, what it means for capital inflow and outflow in the economy. And that relation then affects what happens to the exchange rate, whether there's an appreciation of the exchange rate or a depreciation of, of the exchange rate. And ultimately that fits down to what happens um, on, on the net exports and, and finally on, on outcome or in income um, of the domestic economy. So it is really important that we understand these relationships is there anybody who is not comfortable or who doesn't understand this chain of events before we start? OK, so we will then go straight to what we are supposed to discuss today. Which is 
um, the impact of monetary policy on the ISLM model in the open economy. So this is diagram 7.3 of your study guide, right? Um, and by now we know the relation, or at least the diagram of the ISLM model in a closed economy. Um, and this is a horizontal LM curve. Do we recall why the LM curve is horizontal? Anybody? Um, isn't it because like it's um it's because of the interest rates, like the only impact is the interest rates and they're always constant. Yes. Thank you, Rufuno. Um, it's because of the interest rates, and the interest rates are set by the reserve bank. So they, they, they are constant at the level set by the Reserve Bank. So that's why the LM curve is horizontal. The IS curve is downward sloping, and it's also a function of interest and income. So really, um, those of you that were there um, on, on one of the classes that I took, you'll recall that I just come up with very simple steps on how to understand or at least how to answer the question, right? So if the question is asking you for a monetary policy, um, you need to be asking yourself which curve is affected. So that's that's the first thing. So you're asking yourself, is it the LM curve or the IS curve that is affected? If it's asking you for, for a contractionary or an expansionary monetary policy, then you're asking yourself, what is the direction of the curve? So is it moving to the to, to on top? Is it moving upwards or is it moving downwards? If it's the IS curve, which we're not covering today, then the question is, is it moving to the right or is it moving to the left? That's the second thing you ask yourself. The third thing you ask yourself is which variable changes? So for example, if the question is on monetary policy, um, we just learned that the only variable of interest in monetary policy is interest rates. So you're asking yourself what direction um, of change is the interest rate? Is the interest rate increasing or is the interest rate decreasing? So is it an expansionary policy or a contractionary policy? Uh, similarly, if it was fiscal policy, you'd be asking yourself which variable of fiscal policy is of interest? Is it government spending or is it taxes that um, government is, is using to implement that policy? So those are the three key questions. And then the, 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 the fourth thing that you also need to recall is that you need to be able to narrate what everything means. You need to be able to narrate it in a diagram. You need to be able to narrate it in words. And you need to be able to narrate it by chain of events. So by chain of events, we're really um, just talking about this equation. So you just write the arrows in place. What happens? You show with an arrow. So that is the chain of events. In words, you are explaining what it means. You are explaining what it means. Um, and then in the diagram, that's what we have here. So the, so the question will be specific, right? It will ask you, do this by chain of events or it will ask you show this on a diagram or it will it will ask you describe in detail um, what this is or whatever the policy that is being asked is. Then coming into the open economy. So the only difference between open economy and closed economy is this issue that you now add a exchange rates. So once the question says open economy, you know that the answer is not complete if you don't say anything about the exchange rate, once it is open, you should be saying something about the exchange rate and you should be saying something about um, not only the interest rates, but exports and imports. So if you recall that GDP formula that we had in the beginning, which was Y equals to G plus C plus I plus net exports, which is exports minus imports, right? So once you get to closed economy, you stop at I. So closed economy will be C plus I plus G. Once the question asks for an open economy, 
then you need to extend your narration to include net exports or exports and imports. So that's really the trick to, to the question. You are identifying which curve, the direction of the curve, which variable, is it an open or a closed economy? If it is an open economy, then you are adding exchange rates into your narration. If it is closed, then you're stopping either at the G or the I or the C, depending on what the question is. So let's go through the example of a contractionary monetary policy. And like I said, this is um, diagram 7.3 in the study guides. So we know, so, so the question will be, what is the impact of a contractionary monetary policy? Um, and the way you start about this is you have your standard ISLM curve. So this is LM um, and IS curve here. And the equilibrium is at equilibrium A, which will give us an output or an outcome of Y, right? So this is a contractionary monetary policy. So which curve shifts? Is it the IS curve or the LM curve? It's the LM curve, right? Because this is a monetary policy. So then you ask yourself, to which direction does it change to? So we know this is a contractionary monetary policy. So if the economy is contracting, what does this mean? Is this an increase in interest rate or a decrease in interest rate? Would, would a decrease in interest rate contract the economy? Anybody? Richard? It would in, it increase the economy. Yes, it would increase. Or put it income. All right. So we know that if if our interest rates um, decrease, what does that mean for cost of borrowing? It means we can borrow a lot of money. And what that does mean, that means we can then spend more. And that means um, our production or income will increase. So ultimately, a reduction in interest rate will increase Y. So this, this is actually an example of an expansionary monetary policy because a change in interest rate, a decrease in interest rate, leads to an increase in income. So what you actually want for this specific question is actually an increase in interest rates. All right, because we know that if if interest rates increase, um, the cost of borrowing is high, so we borrow less, both people and firms. And what that means is we will then produce less. So if we produce less, it means our economy contracts. So for this specific question, um, we need to be increasing interest rates because they are asking us for a contractionary monetary policy. So if we increase interest rates from I dash to I1 dash, um, what will happen is the LM curve will shift upwards, right? An upward shift of the LM curve will result in a new equilibrium at A1 and a reduced um, income or output at Y1. So an upward shift of the LM curve is actually um, illustrative of a contractionary monetary policy. So now that we've shown that on the, on the diagram, we need to then ask ourselves, what does it mean um, for the economy? Is this in the open economy or in the closed economy? So the question here is very specific. It's in an open economy. So this already tells us that we need to be thinking about our interest um, our interest uh, parity condition, right? So we know that if, int if, if, if interest goes up, um, what happens to exchange rates? Do they appreciate or depreciate? And why? Anybody? Okay, so it's, it's on the curve um, in front of us here. So we know that... Um, if the interest rates in, in a particular country go up, what does that mean in terms of the return um, on the bonds in that country? It means the return is high. Um, and what that means 
is that people are going to demand a lot of the assets in that in that country and as a result um our exchange rate is going to appreciate right because then uh, people are bringing in money into that country and our exchange rate is going to appreciate so you see that in this um interest parity condition diagram which shows the relationship between exchange rates and interest rates so interest and exchange rates are positively related um where is that diagram there it is yeah so a reduction in interest rates um will result in people taking out their money the returns in that country are not high so people withdraw their money and they take them to other economies whose returns are high which then means our exchange rate depreciates so in a night in a nutshell what happens if there's a contractionary monetary policy on the ism model is that one um our investment decreases because there's an increase in interest rates which decreases output or income and what that means is that our exchange rate is going to appreciate our exchange rate is appreciating because interest rates have increased and the returns of the bonds in our country are much higher so there's a lot of money or capital flowing into the economy um but what does that mean for exports and imports? If there's an appreciation of the exchange rate, it means that our currency is strong. If our currency is strong, it means the goods that we produce in our country um, are expensive, right? So it means that other people from other countries cannot buy um, the same goods of the same value because our exchange rate is appreciated. So we see a decrease in exports. Um, and for the same reason, because our currency is now stronger, it means we can buy more with the same um, value, or with the same currency, which means our imports um, will increase. So what does that do to the net exports? The net exports worsens. Remember, net exports is exports minus imports. So if exports is reducing and imports are increasing, it means in, in a nutshell or in some, um, the net exports will be reduced. So that's really the answer to, to the question. So you will see that you've identified the curve, it's the LM curve. You've identified the direction of the variable, it's an increase in interest rates you must narrate what happens in the local economy so this is the relationship between interest rates and investments and income and now you are bringing in the open economy you are now explaining the relationship between interest and the exchange rate and you are now bringing it back to the local economy by considering what the exchange rate does to the net exports so that that is how you tackle that question so in your study guide, um, you didn't have the expansionary monetary policy part. So I've just included this in here for, for discussion. But the, this, the thinking is the same. If it's an expansionary monetary policy, like we said, um, we would have a reduction in interest rates. Then you ask yourself, what does a reduction in interest rates look like? It looks like a downward shift of the LM curve and it results in increased output. So then you explain um, the relationship between interest rates and investments and, and output. And then you also explain the relationship between interest and exchange rate. So because our interest rates are reducing, we know from this direct relationship, they're directly proportional, um, a reduction in interest rates will result in a reduction in exchange rates. In other words, um, our exchange rate will depreciate. And then you ask yourself, what does that mean for exports and imports? So if your currency has lost value or it has depreciated, do you buy more um, or do you buy less as a country? So in terms of exports, um, if our currency has lost value, it means um, our currency is cheaper 
So our trading partners will buy more from us. So a depreciation of a currency is associated with an increase in exports, whilst um, a depreciation is, is associated with a decrease in imports. And that's simply because if your currency has lost value, or your currency is cheap, it means you can't buy as much as you would with the same value of money, which means you now import less. So that's what's happening with your net export situation in an expansionary monetary policy. Does anyone have, have a question? This is all we're discussing today. Um, monetary policy in an open economy. So we look at question four. So I've just picked up all the open economy questions because that's what we're dealing with today. But if you have um, questions on the other questions, you are more than welcome to, to post it on the discussion forum and I will respond from there. So question four is asking us, um, in the ISLM model for an open economy, then it gives us lots of options. Um, a downward movement along the IS curve implies that an increase in interest rate leads directly through investment and indirectly through exchange rate to a decrease in demand for goods and the level of output and income. A downward movement along the IS curve implies that a decrease in interest rate leads directly through investment and directly through the exchange rate to an increase in the demand for goods and an increase in the level of output and income. C, the LM curve is horizontal at the interest rate set by the central bank. And D, equilibrium output and the equilibrium interest rate are given by the interaction, are given by the IS and LM curve intersection. What's the correct answer? Anybody? Number three. Is the answer number three? Anyone else? Okay, so to be able to answer this question, we just need to go to the ISLM curve, right? I wish I knew how to split my screens. So we know that C is correct, right? So usually I, I do the process, I mean, the elimination, it works for me and I encourage you to, to do that because that will help you, especially where you are very sure of the answer. It's it's a quicker way to, to answer MCQs. So we know C is correct um, and all these options have C. Um, we know D is correct. So this means four and five are out. So the question is one, two or three. Right, so we need to look at A and B carefully because that's the distinguishing one. So let's look at A. A says a downward movement along the curve. So a downward movement along the curve um, implies that an increase in the interest rate. Uh, A is incorrect, right? Because we know that the IS curve the IS curve is downward sloping. So a downward movement. Can you guys see my case? Or you can't yes, see it? Yes, okay. we can. We can. Oh, perfect. So a downward movement along the AS curve means a decrease in interest rates. Right? If it was an upward movement along the curve, then it would be an increase in interest rate. So the correct answer is a decrease in interest rate. So the correct answer is actually two. So question five um, is asking for, in the ISLM model for an open economy, an increase in the interest rate causes. So this is what we've been discussing today. So an increase in the interest rate, what does it do? We know that an increase in the interest rate is a, contractionary monetary policy. So we're actually looking at this diagram here. So your answer is here. So let's look at the options. So it says an increase in the interest rate causes a capital inflow, an appreciation of the currency, and a deterioration of the trade balance. It causes a capital outflow, 
a depreciation of the of the exchange rate and an improvement of the trade balance. Three, a capital outflow, an appreciation of the exchange rate and an improvement of the trade balance. Four, a capital inflow, a depreciation of the exchange rate and an improvement of the trade balance. So if there's an increase in interest rate, we know that that means that the returns in our country are very good, right? It means the bonds in this country are so attractive. So what does that mean? It means everybody would want to invest in our country. So we know that there has to be a capital inflow because our bonds are attractive, which means the correct answer is either one or four, right? So now we must um, we must make sense of what happens to the exchange rate. So we know from this diagram here that an increase in interest rate results in an increase in exchange rate or an appreciation of the exchange rate. So let's see which one. So one um, capital inflow and an appreciation of the exchange rate for a capital inflow and a depreciation of the exchange rate. So the correct answer is one. So I hope you guys can see that I'm implementing those steps that um, that are highlighted there in the beginning. So it's really a question of asking yourself, what is the variable? What is the, what is the, 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 the relation that's affected? Is it IS or LM? How does it change? Is it an open economy or not? and then you translate that to exports and imports. And then we have a question here, question six. So question six is saying, the diagram above illustrates the impact. Okay, which one of the following is correct? I think we can just look at the diagram. We can see that there's a downward shift in the LM curve. So a downward shift in the LM curve means there's a reduction in interest rates. So a reduction in interest rates means there's an expansionary policy, right? I'm just saying all the things that we were discussing earlier. So now we can come to the question. Which of the following statement is correct? The diagram above illustrates the impact of a contractionary monetary policy. The diagram above illustrates the impact of a contractionary fiscal policy. The diagram above illustrates the impact of an expansionary monetary policy. The diagram above illustrates the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy. OK, so we know that it's not fiscal policy because it's not the IS curve moving. Are we in agreement? So it can't be the, the, the fiscal policy because it's not the IS curve moving. So it means the correct answer is between one and three. So. The question is whether this is a contractionary monetary policy or an expansionary monetary policy. So we know that from the diagram, we can see that our interest rates decreased from I to I1. So a reduction, a reduction in interest rates means the cost of borrowing is less, which means your investments increase, which means your outcome or output increase. So this is an expansionary monetary policy. So the correct answer is three. So then we move to the next question, which is question seven. Question seven um, from the same diagram is asking which of the following statements is correct regarding the overall impact on exports and imports. So it means we know that this is an expansionary monetary policy. So we need to go through these options. We can go through the first option. A downward shift of the LM curve takes place if interest rate decreases. OK, so the first statement is correct, right? And that statement is there on both one, two, three and four. OK, then the next statement, the lower interest rate increases the normal, the nominal exchange rate and the domestic currency appreciates. So the second question is about the relationship between interest rates 
and the exchange rate. Now we can see from the diagram, if there's a decrease in interest rate, there's also a decrease in exchange rate. So a decrease in interest rates means a depreciation of the exchange rate. So let's look at the option. So the lower interest rate increases the exchange rate. So that is wrong, right? So one is out. Two, the lower interest rate decreases nominal exchange rate and the domestic currency appreciates. So this is wrong as well. Because if your exchange rate is decreasing, your currency is not appreciating, it is depreciating. So three, um, the lower interest rate decreases nominal and exchange rate depreciates. So that statement is correct. And then four, the lower interest rate decreases and the currency then depreciates. OK, so three and four are correct, right? So you saw how we eliminated one and you saw how we eliminated two. The relationship between interest and exchange rate was not correctly articulated. So let's move on to the next statement. So it says, once you have a depreciation, there's decreasing exports and increasing imports. Is that correct? So if, if your exchange rate um, depreciates, which means it loses value, what does that mean for your exports? It means your exports will increase. Increase. Yes. So let's see here. So decreasing exports and increasing imports. So it means the correct answer is four because your exports must increase and your imports here are indeterminate. Does anyone understand what indeterminate means? No, I don't. OK, so but you 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 follow how we eliminated one, two and three, right? Yes. OK, so in terms of four, and I'm glad this came up when there's a when there's a depreciation in the currency, what happens is that your your exports. They increase, right? If your exports increase, it means your net exports increase, which means your income also increases. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if there's a depreciation in the currency, your imports reduce because you can't afford to buy the same goods with the same money. Your money has lost value. So your imports reduce. If your imports reduce, um, your net exports increase, which means your Y increase, and yeah, your Y increase basically. So if if your Y increases, what happens to imports? If your Y, so if as a country you can produce more, are you going to import more or import less? So your income is more. Are you going to import more or import less? Import less. Import more. You're going to import more. You have more money as a country. <clears throat> so you are incentivized oh, so to good. import more. So if you import more, your net export is reduced. So if you look at the chain of events, you will see that the depreciating currency actually reduced imports. But the effect on output or outcome or income, whichever you like, increases imports. So you have contradicting effects on imports. So the one, the currency effect is that your imports reduce, but your output effect is that your imports increase. So a reduction in imports and an increase in imports almost cancels one another. So that's why the answer there is it's indeterminate. You really don't know unless you had a diagram or you had numbers uh, and they were to scale and you were doing the actual calculation. Then you would know which effect was greater than which. So the fact that you don't have, it just means you have contradicting effects 
and you are unable to say what the impact on imports is. So that is how we get to imports are indeterminate. It's really the issue that the currency affects imports, but the output also affects imports to a certain level. And then you have two contradicting on imports and therefore imports is an indeterminate. That's that's the English, indeterminate, which just means you're uncertain or you don't really know. So the correct answer here is four, but the trick as usual is really understanding which curve moves to which direction, what is the relationship between interest and exchange rates, and therefore what is the relationship between exchange rates and exports and imports. Then there was also um, a true and false, and I've misspelled false there, a true and false revision question, which was question eight, which says in an open economy, assume the central bank decides to increase the interest rate. So your interest rates are increasing, which causes a decrease in capital inflows. The nominal exchange rate decreases, and domestic currency depreciates. Is this true or false? And why? Um, can I just say something? Yeah. Isn't it the interest rates and capital inflow have a positive relationship? So if interest rates are increasing, then that would mean that um, capital inflow would also increase. Exactly. Which means this question is false. Right, so the correct answer here is false. Eight is false because you, you've you hit it on the nail. Yeah, so it's because of the positive relationship between interest rates and exchange rates and capital inflows. And even you, you could have even made sense of it because of the currency depreciates. We know that if interest increase, the currency appreciates or the currency also increases. So that is correct. Thank you very much. So then we move to question 10. Suppose monetary expansion is implemented in an open economy. In other words, the interest rate decreases, right? So this is an expansionary monetary policy. In the goods market, the change in interest rate causes a decline in investment spending, which decreases the demand for goods and the level of output, and in turn, a decline in income. Is this correct or not? And why? Okay, so, so we have this here, right? So the question is about an expansionary monetary policy and it is asking what is the effect or the impact on investment and income. So we know that if interest rate decreases, um, investment will increase and income will increase. This is the relationship in the goods market. What is this one saying? So this one is saying the change in interest rates causes a decline. So this is not correct, right? because our interest rates are decreasing, which means the cost of borrowing is less and um, investment expenditure companies are going to, to invest more. They can borrow more, they will invest more, and we will produce more, and therefore the income will increase. So 10 is also false. So that's the end. Um, those are the questions that I could find in Learning Unit 7 that test monetary expansion in an ISLM model for an open economy. <laughs> okay, so it means um, you guys are going to get these correct, right? Anything asking you about monetary policy in an open economy, um, you guys are going to, to get all of them correct. Remember the art is just um, reminding yourself of these, of these steps. So which curve, which direction, and what are the reasonable, what are the, what are the relationships? What is the relationship between interest and exchange rate, exchange rate and exports, exchange rate and imports? If you can uh, master this, you will be able to answer 
any question in any form or variation that um, the examiners will will set. So on that note, um, that's all I had for you today. And I hope I'll be seeing you in the discussion forums. Good night, everybody.